Good morning. Today I wanted to talk to the ladies specifically, but also of course all those men out there who care about their females health. So I want to talk to um, those that are looking to either conceive now or in the future or um, anyone out there who's even pregnant at the moment. We're talking a little bit about genetics today and specifically how um, the nutrition in your body can greatly obviously affect your health, your baby's health, and how you can so easily become depleted in the right nutrients. So if you've heard me talk about genetics before, you've likely heard me use the word methylation. So what is methylation? It's a chemical process that has to do with over 250 different functions in your body. So it's huge, it has to do with all of your health, how you think, how you feel. And it's estimated that upwards of 70% of the population may have reductions significantly too in their methylation process. So what happens when you have a reduction in this process is something gets slowed down which can have severe consequences to your health. So it can be thought of not having enough gas to your car. So I often refer to methylation being like the gas to your car. So if you have any sort of deficiency here, then your, your, your car cannot run properly. So in particular, we can speak of folate. And we know this is a nutrient that is critical to the health and development of babies. So folate is affected by what we would call the MTHFR gene in your body. And there are about 150 different types of folate in food, just different types of this nutrient. And then there's a synthetic man-made version called folic acid. And you've probably heard or you know that folic acid started being added into food um, decades ago when they realized that there were some deficiencies of folate and neuro tube defects that were occurring within children. So let me repeat that. Folate is naturally occurring in food. Folic acid is man-made. And folate is the backbone to numerous processes in your body. So it has to do with making neurotransmitters, making DNA, um, the creation of your blood cells. It has to do with your immune system. So it is incredibly far reaching in its importance in your body and it affects your health and how you think and how you feel. And your genetics affect this because it takes five different steps to transform folic acid into an active methylated form of folate. So it has to be methylated to be usable in your body. And that's why we talk about methylation and why it's so important. So your genes make the enzyme that's responsible for transforming um, this inactive form into its active usable form. And MTHFR, that one gene is specifically the last step in this process, but there are numerous other steps. So what does this have to do with pregnancy? So first off, I can't think of hardly anyone, I can't think of anyone that is eating enough dark leafy green vegetables. So folate naturally comes from dark leafy greens. And you have to be eating a lot of those to get enough in your body just to live normally. But then the demand is even increased in pregnancy. And I don't know about you, but when's the last time you've really had a ton of dark leafy greens? What people do is they typically supplement, right? They start to supplement with this nutrient, with vitamins. Um, either they eat foods that are fortified, enriched with folic acid, or they take a multivitamin or a prenatal supplement. But remember, when you're taking in this form, you still have to make it usable. So it's the inactive form that you're normally taking in from this supplement or this food um, that's been fortified with folic acid that you then have to transform to even get into your cells and be used. As I said, many of us cannot do this well. So not only are you probably not getting much in um, from your diet, you cannot even make it available for all of those critical functions. 
and this can actually hurt you because that inactive form can start to build up in your body and it can take the place of on some of these receptors that need to be bringing in the folate, the active form, so it starts to block in that so that um, you get a buildup of the inactive form and not using the active form of folate. You could be blocking your body's natural ability to even take in the natural folate that you absorb from dark leafy greens. We can have a problem, right? So I hope you're all following along with this. So then you can become deficient in this nutrient and likely other critical B vitamins like B12 and B6 and B2 because when you're normally deficient in one, one B vitamin, you're normally deficient in others. Um, it'd be pretty rare if you're only deficient in one because these systems work so closely together. So then you can have multiple B vitamin deficiencies when you're trying to conceive or when you're pregnant and you're not getting enough of these nutrients and I'm not going to go too far in this, but um, guess what also causes deficiency in these B vitamins? Birth control. So hormonal birth control, the pill, those actually cause deficiencies in these B vitamins as well. So just think, you've probably, many women have been on these pills um, or other forms of hormonal birth control, sometimes even for decades. So you can add that deficiency on top of these deficiencies and see how this can really create a problem. And guess what these deficiencies and these um, genetic issues are linked to? miscarriages, sometimes recurring, you know, multiple miscarriages, um, infertility and just the inability to conceive, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, postpartum depression, and of course there'd be issues with the baby as well. So if severe enough, those neural tube defects, but immune system issues, um, it's been linked to autism and different learning disabilities, um, if there's deficiencies before, you know, in the prenatal stage, possibly Down syndrome and um, other developmental issues and failure to thrive, lack of growth. So severe consequences that can come from these issues. And because the development does not stop, of course, just a time of birth, but you may be let's say breastfeeding your child, right? So you're breastfeeding your baby and then you can be passing along that inactive form of folic acid to your baby who may also not be good at transforming it into the active form. So it can be also a secondary deficiency there. So neither of you can work on those important processes that we've talked about, um, as well as getting rid of toxins and getting rid of poisons from your body that we naturally come in contact with from the environment. And the risk of all those diseases and issues goes up. So I know that was a lot of info. Um, but I just want you to have the takeaway that there is an inactive form of folic acid and there is an active form of folate. And um, to use folic acid in your body, it takes five different steps, which are determined by our DNA as how well we are good at this, determined by our genetics, and to transform it. And we often, because of our diet today, and some of these genetics do not have enough of this important critical nutrients and we can have lots of nutrient deficiencies that can have severe consequences. And so by knowing your genetics and know how you are set up, you can support this and you can support it correctly and prevent all of these things. So maybe you have even experienced some of these issues that I mentioned earlier. And, um, <clears throat> Taking folic acid, so taking those supplements, whether you have a methylation issue or not, is just not recommended. You can take the, actually the active form, so you can bypass all of those steps. And many docs do not still realize the importance of this. Um, so even if there was a supplement that was recommended by your, your gynecologist or your doctor, I would still just recommend 
taking it into your hands and looking at the back of the supplement to make sure and see what form you are taking. So you would want to look for something that says like methylated um, tetrahydrofolic acid, 5-MTHF. So that's a methylated form or folinic acid is like a methylated form. So um, we could talk about this so much more in depth, but I really just wanted to give you an intro to stress the importance of taking care of your body, your nutrition, and how with awesome technology, we can support ourselves and we can support the future of our child's health before we even conceive um, and while we're pregnant. So if you want to learn more about this or talk more about this, I do have a free webinar um, next week, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time. So that'd be 8.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. And we're gonna talk more about genetics and how you can take control over your health by knowing your genetics. You can sign up for this at zenfunctionalwellness.com slash live. Um, or through uh, the link below this video. And if you have questions about this or how it might be personally affecting you or your child um, or your, your spouse, your wife, then you can set up a consultation with me through my website at zenfunctionalwellness.com as well. But I hope to see you next week at my free webinar and we'll um, be going into other information, not just with pregnancy, but also how um, it can really help everyone with their health and disease prevention. So I hope you found this valuable and I hope to see you next week and we'll talk soon. Thanks.